the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast, live. You're down with Rappaport, yes I am. 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 You better tune in, IamRappaport.com. Cause every single podcast, you know he drops bombs. I seen him on set, a seasoned vet with true talent. Catch him on his way to CrossFit, rocking the new balance. He asked me to do the track, cause he know I rhyme elite. But I'm just waiting for the Robert, Robert De Niro line, line of the, the week. Breakfast of champions, toasted bagel, cream, cream cheese, and locks. This is I Am Rappaport. The show never stops. You might catch him out in public, stretching his knees. But if you don't listen to the show, yo, wiggle, wiggle please. please. Wiggle, 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 please. This is the I Am Rappaport Podcast. It's the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. This is an emergency podcast. Um, this is Michael Rappaport, a.k.a. the Gringo Mandingo. Um, I'm on the phone here with G. Moody. Uh, last name rhymes with duty. And... Yeah. The official, unofficial political correspondent of the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast, Mr. Eli Lake. Um, this is the, 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 we're still in flux. We don't know who's going to be president. But Eli, I, I'm going to just let you start this off because I think you and me are in shock. I, I don't know what the fuck you're doing, Moody, in the Bronx. Uh, but, but Eli, uh, you, you, you could take the lead here. All right. Well, first things first. I was wrong, and Gerald Moody, you were right. Looks like Donald Trump is going to be the next president of the United States, and I cannot believe I am saying that. Wow. That is, he has shocked the world. This is unbelievable. Yo, Eli, what, happening. What, what's the climate like in, in, in Washington right now? Like, you, you're, you're out and about. You're, you're, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep it real with our audience. It's, um, it's, 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 it's Tuesday, it's Wednesday morning, the, the ninth, uh, but it's, it's the middle of the night in, 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 uh, in, in on the East coast. Uh, and, uh, w- w- what, what's the deal over there, Eli? Who are you around? W- what, what's the climate? Paint the picture. I was with some, I was in a newsroom. I was with other journalists and people are shocked. I would say that every, nobody thought this was going to happen. Um, most people thought that, I mean, the phrase they used, they had to get an inside straight. Um, I, has, I was under the impression that the Democrats had this incredible get-out-the-vote operation. They thought their early voters looked really good. There were more Latinos who were registered, who people thought would vote against Trump and send him a message. And he is looking at this point that he is going to win the election. And... That is an as a frightening and shocking development. Yo, man, I can't even fucking believe we're having this emergency I am Rapport Stereo podcast conversation for real. Now, 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 Moody, you fucking yeah. you, you, you proud of yourself? No, hey, it's the facts of the facts. <laughs> you, you want to expound upon that? I mean, Eli, here he is. This is this is the guy, and, and I'm not just tooting my own horn here. I, I'm keeping it 400. percent I'll keep it 500 percent real. Gerald Moody, who doesn't have a middle name, um, the 2015 podcast co-host of the year, is the first person that I heard say that Donald Trump was going to become president. He did it sometime along uh, around the time of September of last year. He started talking this shit. Um, it's all documented. Um, we're we're going to play it. I, I, I mean, uh, we're, we're all intelligent people. We, we, we all talk for a living. Eli, you write for a living. We've talked uh, 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 endlessly on this show about this. Um, are you? I, I'm in shock. That I mean, I know it's not official, 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 and I have a feeling that, let's say, uh, I have a feeling this is going to keep going. I don't think this is going to just end like right away. But let's just assume that it's looking like Donald Trump is going to be the president of the United States. Th- what what happens now? Like now, what? Mm. Off the top, for the last 16 years, both George W. Bush and President Obama in some ways for very different reasons, accrued enormous power to the presidency. 
more so than at any point probably in our history, except for Abraham Lincoln in the, in the Civil War. And Donald Trump, who has proven himself in the campaign to not have, in my view, the temperament necessary to be in such an important position, will have enormous power when it comes to our trade agreements, when it comes to our military, what he decides to do, even though he's campaigned in part on sort of not engaging in the world in, in some respects. Uh, it's a very scary proposition because the president has enormous power in our system at this point, and Congress has allowed that, and the Congress looks like it's going to be in the hands of the Republicans, so the Republicans will have all branches of government. This is, uh, it's, this is really extraordinary. I mean, I had started writing a column for tomorrow about Hillary winning, because that's what I thought was going to happen, and sort of looking at, you know, what Republicans ought to do from, from here. This is the new Republican Party. I think there's a lot of Republicans who don't want to be part of that party, to be honest with you. I mean, that's, that's my sense. So, so what, 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 I mean, I know you're not a future, uh, you can't read it, you're not a fortune teller. So then, if, if, then what would happen, potentially? I, I, nothing is fact, and I don't want you to feel like I'm putting you on the spot to fact. Potentially, what could possibly happen when you say that, you know, Republicans might not want to be a part of that party? Do they, do they step down from office? Do they, like, what, what could potentially happen? Well, I mean, it's extraordinary <clears throat> that you had no living Republican president, so both Bushes. Mitt Romney wouldn't endorse him. The governor of Ohio, who had the convention, wouldn't go to the convention. He's a Republican. There are a number of people who, who sort of stood against him, and it's, it's more, even more true for conservative intellectuals who really opposed him. Magazines like the National Review and the Weekly Standard were very tough against Trump. And now he's going to be the president, and... Usually people like to sort of go with the winner, but there are really serious principle issues. But it's also a bit deeper than that. It's more than politics. And I'm just thinking here, mm -hmm. kind of about like, I did not think this was going to happen. This is about a guy who divides us and deliberately would say that the most vulnerable citizens, people who are undocumented workers, you know, kind of saying that they were all criminals and making their lives even harder. And it's things like that which just go against my sense of decency, and I think a lot of other Americans. What's right. amazing is that he won this election. I thought that that was going to alienate so many people, and he won this election, which is just, mm. I think that maybe they looked at things. I'd like to hear from Gerald Moody, who is being called the co-host Radamus on Twitter, yeah, yeah. He yes. saw something again that nobody else saw. Like all the pros did not see this. Everybody thought that Hillary's gonna, you know, get this thing easy. And that was like this morning people were saying that. So all right. I'm like flabbergasted. The, the the floor is yours, uh, Mr. Moody. Uh I saw it because of the the sentiment that he could tap into um through the like, you know, the rust belt and all the, the people from Ohio and those hardworking folk that felt shunned. Uh, and I thought that he tapped into that, and I thought that he would win based on that and just telling it like it is, which is the catchphrase. So I thought that if he would uh, galvanize that group, there's no way he wouldn't win. And this, this is what seemingly has happened. Now, now G, I, I, I've known you. Since 82, I, 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 I know you inside it out. No Bruno. Yes. No Bruno. <laughs> um, and, and me and Eli, we, we, we spoke earlier on the phone because I was like calling to get him e updates. And he asked me a question that I didn't have the answer to. And I'm going to ask you the question. Eli asked me earlier, you know, is, he basically said, is, is Moody serious about what he was saying about Trump or is he just bullshitting around for the podcast? Now, I, I, with all, in all seriousness, G, um, I, and, yeah. and I, I normally could answer for you, but I didn't give. I was like, I don't know. I just think he's fucking around. I don't know. I, I, and I, I, when he asked me that, I, I, it dawned on me that I didn't really know. 
Now, let's just, <laughs> assuming Trump is the actual winner, did you actually think that he was going to win or were you just saying that to be provocative to me and to be provocative to the show? In all honesty, from the bottom of your In heart. In all honesty, I believed it. I said it. I stood by it. I stood on it. I believed that because I had uh, a political, uh, I had did a little bit of research, man, and I knew the strategy of what he was doing, you know? So um, I, I kind of based it on that. And I thought if he could pull that off, no way he wouldn't win. I'm in fucking shock, you know. And and you know the thing, the thing that concerns me most, just my my my, my first gut instinct concern, Eli, is that mm-hmm. as 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 reckless and as greasy and as inappropriate as he was talking during the campaign, he pulled back at times. Now being the president of the United States, we're 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 gonna see things. And hear things out of a president's mouth that even in those comedy spoofs of having Chris Rock as president or this one and that one as president and all the Saturday Night Live spoofs and in Richard Pryor's wildest wet fantasy dream of what it would look like. We're going to hear and see things if Donald Trump is a president that we never thought were imaginable. Yeah, I think that there's that and... You know, look at the reaction from the markets on the news that he was winning. I mean, this is going to send a potential economic shockwave. There's a lot of implications here because nobody predicted this. Except and for G. Moody. Yeah, except for yes. G. Moody. G. Moody. Yes. Uh-huh. I think he tapped into something. <laughs> yes. <sighs> I mean, you got it. I, I mean, listen, I was on this podcast. I was. I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to pussyfoot around it. I thought she was going to blow him out, and I, I'm, like, amazed. I mean, it's incredible if you think about it. Not yeah. even a month ago, the leaders of the Republican Party and even his own vice president couldn't defend what he was saying on that tape on Access Hollywood. The infamous yeah, grab like, her by the pussy tape. That's yeah. right. People, people were walking away from him like they wouldn't believe, and here he is. Wow. He did it his way. You got to give him. You got to give him credit. Got a little bit of an assist from the FBI. Let's be real. <laughs> Explain right. that in, in, in layman's terms. I know you did it once before. Explain that in the most current state of of, of the FBI. Their 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 uh their mark on well, this. Well, the week, but the week, like less, like less than two weeks before the election, the FBI director told Congress there might be new emails that they had to look at, and effectively. That we were reopening the case, which he'd cleared Hillary of um, in July. And then there was a series of leaks from the FBI, which revealed there was an investigation into what's called the Clinton Foundation, which looks like a kind of, ins- it was, it's, it's, a, it's a philanthropy, it's a charity run by uh, Bill Clinton, but there was clearly elements of it which were used to influence or try to influence uh, Hillary. And there was a for-profit component of it, and the FBI was looking into it. And, I mean, I'm not going to comment at this point on what we know or don't know about the Clinton Foundation because there may very well be a story there. But to leak the fact that there is an FBI investigation is an extraordinary thing right before an election like that. Mm -hmm. So I think, I don't know that, that that gave Trump the election, but it was clearly there were people at the FBI who were signaling that they were for Trump and they thought Hillary was crooked, which was, of course, Trump's message about Hillary, calling her crooked Hillary and everything like that. I'm not saying that that gave there were other things, too. I think Moody is correct that he tapped into a kind of resentment and anger. And I just did not know that there were more of those people voting in this election than people who were going to be so horrified and offended by Trump, which I just thought more people, more Americans would come down there. Um, on a lighter note, in, in regards to the, the election and, and, and the votes, California voted to legalize rec- recreational marijuana. Florida mm. voted to legalize Marijuana in Florida. Florida also uh, is is a state that uh, it looked like it was going to be a Hillary state, and and, and with a last minute 
uh, soak in the bath salt tub, turns it around and, and, and one Florida. And also, what about this, Eli? What about the hipster fucks? that wanted to buck the system and shun the mainstream politics and voted for this guy, fucking Gary Johnson, who they probably couldn't even pick out of a lineup. Well, well, how much of an impact will the hipster fucks trying to be, you know, uh, 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 ironic and, and, and against the grain and it's, it's Movember and they're not shaving and all this sort of thing. And they voted for this guy, Gary Johnson, it, it, did, did any of that affect this? This like at the end of the day, it, it, it seems like those votes for the Gary Johnson, because this is going to wind up being so close, will will wind up having affected uh, Hillary's uh, 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 losing if if she actually is the one who winds up losing this 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 uh, this race. Correct? Well, I don't know, but I mean, Ralph Nader definitely cost Al Gore the election in two thousand because he took all the votes away from Democrats because he was he was a progressive. Gary Johnson probably took some votes away from Trump, uh, as well as Hillary. Uh, anyone stupid enough to vote for Jill Stein, who was the Green Party candidate, uh, certainly was taking votes away from Hillary. That was like that was basically like voting for Trump. And I mean, she she didn't really register as much. But he's really. I mean, we have to see the final tallies. But I mean, who predicted that he was going to win Wisconsin? And people are calling it for Wisconsin. I mean, he's doing really much better than anybody thought. So I don't know that Gary Johnson was much of a factor. I think the factor here is that um, the people who live on the coast, like us, and who are elites, did, did really underestimate how the rest of the country felt about where things were going. I mean, that, that's one big part of it. And, and too few people... Uh, have not seen the dangers of a guy like Donald Trump having all this power. I'm not going to say he's going to be like Adolf Hitler. I think that that is a, that's a, that's an exaggeration. That's hyperbole and we shouldn't do that. But I do think that he is the kind of person who's such an egomaniac and he has such a poor temperament that he does present a real danger. Um, I think he's going to, I think the real problem with him is he's going to use the power of the enormous power of the federal government to go after his enemies. I agree. And his personal enemies. I agree. Like Richard Nixon. I totally and that's agree. Bad. I totally, I swear to God, earlier this evening, when, when this was looking like it was going to go this way, with all the shit that we talk on Twitter and the Instagram, I was like, this fucking guy could write a list of, of, of like 500 journalists, 500 shit talkers, 500 podcasters, and be like, yeah. you know what? We're going to, uh, we're going to, um, what is it called when they, when, when you, your taxes, we're going to, um, we're going to yeah, audit you. You were going to fucking audit you. And you know what? We're going to audit you again next year. And I'm going to audit you again the next year, asshole. And like little things like that. I swear to God, I was like, he can do shit like that to, 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 to guys like uh, you, Monetti. Well, you're on it. You're, 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 you're his fucking pride and joy. But I, I'm, yeah. I'm fucked. Uh, me and Eli, we're fucked here. We're, we're, we're sitting here we're, we're, with our dicks in our hands getting audited every 15 minutes, and you're over there. You got a job at the White House. You're hanging out at the White House with, with, with Trump now, Moody. That's how things yeah. are looking. See Trump in the house. Great. Yeah, but Moody, you were also, like, talking about how make America great again. When was America great? I mean, you understood that there were – I mean, I think your point was that, like, you were making an analytical point about Trump. Yeah. But you were also, you know, you, you, you saw the danger, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I kind of know the, the sentiment and, and he came out and he spoke to that sentiment. And, and yeah, I mean, you see the outcomes of what it is right now. So and, and that's I, the I, word that you, yeah. you've been saying the most that, that, that I think is really right. That sentiment, that underlying yeah. unspoken sentiment. Yeah. And he, 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 <clears throat> voiced, he voiced it. And uh, the Republicans that didn't support him. How are you going to feel when this man becomes president? Like, how, how are, are you going to support him then? I don't know. Gerald, yeah. I swear to God, Eli, I, we're going to see unprecedented shit go down from our president. Oh, if he's yeah. pre we're going to see wild shit that's never even like th like they're, we're going to see un shit that there's like there's no plan for. Like no one ever thought would happen. That, I really think that there's going to be some unorthodox chaos and craziness in regards to Trump, in regards to the Republican Party viewing Trump, in regards to, you know, literally people fighting in the street. Like I, this, this, this election has tapped an emotional uh, 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 
core that, that any other election, I, I mean, I'm not Mr. Election, I'm not Mr. Uh, politics, but, but do, am, I, am I correct uh, about that, Eli? Like, you know, in history, well, there's the, never been an election that, to me, feels this divisive. Just off the top, everybody predicted that Trump was going to lead to ruin for the Republican Party. He's instead led to a resurgence of Republican rule. So the calculations that everyone was making was that Trump would lose, the party would come to its senses, they would say, we can't do this again. Now, Trump is president, and not only that, Trump figured out a way to win where Romney and McCain failed. So what Trump was doing, which I find so distasteful and bad for the country, so divisive for the country, is now a winning formula, and that's what happens in, like, business and you know and you like you see it in hollywood like if you make yeah. a, a big comic book movie mm-hmm. everybody's making comic book movies right so it's like now everyone's going to be like donald trump and that is another thing i mean so i'm not predicting a mass exodus from the republican party but i'm saying that any chance for them to get you know someone like me is over like i can't you know i think there's going to be like a lot of intelligent or you know conservatives are going to say, wait a second, what's going on? It doesn't mean they're going to become Democrats, but I mean, if that's that, you know what I'm saying? He just proved this formula works. That's, mm-hmm. that's the scariest part of it, too. All right, Eli. Well, we'll let you go, and, and you know, we'll probably you know, have to do a follow up. Hopefully, uh, uh, you know, I don't even know. I don't even know, but I appreciate the Everybody insight. hang in there. I know the, yeah. fa- the fans There's appreciate strong institutions in this country. Yeah. A lot of ways you can participate in our democracy besides voting. Well, we'll need to, we'll need to break that down, uh, you know, soon and shortly yeah. and, and, and in a serious way. I appreciate the insight. I know the fans appreciate the insight. And um, Eli, I, I, I uh, you know, I'll be talking to you soon, my man. Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right, All right guys. Yeah. Moody, good, good, good talking to you. You were right. I was wrong. All right, bro. Peace, Eli. Peace. The Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast is sponsored by Casper Mattresses. Casper is an obsessively engineered mattress at a shockingly fair price. Time Magazine named Casper Mattress one of the best adventures of 2015. Free shipping and returns in the U.S. and Canada. You could try a Casper Mattress for 100 nights risk-free in your own home. If you don't love it, they'll pick it up and refund you everything. That's what you call a money-back true guarantee. Mm -hmm. Made in America... King size mattress could cost you up to two thousand, three thousand, four thousand dollars. If you want a really good mattress, king size, only nine fifty. Go to Casper.com, C-A-S-P-E-R.com forward slash Rappaport. Use the promo code Rappaport. Terms and conditions apply. You get fifty bucks off an already fair price. Great product, Casper mattress. World-renowned strength and conditioning coach Joe DeFranco is here with this week's fitness fact. This week, I'm sharing one of my all-time favorite tricks for instant vertical jump improvement. One of the biggest limiting factors in the vertical jump is the length of your hip flexor muscles. Because we spend so much time sitting, our hip flexors adapt and become shortened, which creates a downward pull on the spine. So when we go to do something like a vertical jump, those tight hip flexors create friction and literally pull us down, preventing our hips from fully extending. So a little trick is to static stretch your hip flexors for about 30 to 60 seconds immediately before testing your vertical jump. Lengthened hip flexors create less friction, which will allow your hips to fully extend and enable you to reach maximum height. Give it a try. It really works. For more fitness advice, download and subscribe to Joe DeFranco's Industrial Strength Show every week at Play.it and iTunes. So, how, how, how do you feel, uh, Gerald? Oh, man. I feel bad that it's had to happen like this, bro. Hmm. I told y'all. Huh. Hmm. I was the only guy standing out there on the limb. I got laughed out of the room. I was scorned. I was uh, ridiculed. 
Yeah, I, uh, you, you said I was a fucking a nut. I now did say, look. yeah, I said you were a fucking nut. Yeah, I said it. Yeah. I said and it. now look. I said you were a fucking nut. <laughs> huh. I said you were a fucking nut. How do you like that? <laughs> uh, but um, this is bad. I'm, I, I hate to be right, man, on this shit, man. But what can we do? Um, just for the people who think that we're bullshitting, uh, Miles and Jordan, the two producers extraordinaire, please once again play the clip of Gerald Moody predicting this. Who do you think is going to win? Trump going to win this shit. You think that Trump's going to actually win? All he got to do is get his policy shit in order. Well, he's got to learn some policy. Yeah, now you... you, you you turned he, it, he can do it. You it, turned it out. It's a year. It's over a year away. <laughs> it's like a year and four months away. There you have it. That 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 is the actual prediction uh, from Gerald Moody making this prediction. There's no bullshit. Um, I, I hate that you were right too. I don't like this guy. I, I'm gonna be honest. I see pieces of myself in him. <laughs> a blowhard, obnoxious shit talker. But. I'm not running for president. Yeah. See, I'm in the entertainment business, and Donald Trump is a, 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 a guy who's in the real estate slash entertainment business, and he's a business mogul, but he's also an entertainer, and, and that's who you have running for your, your country now. So that, 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 there you have it. Um, and and as De Niro said, he's also a dog, too. Oh, yeah. De Niro said he called him a mutt, a dog, a con. A butt. He called him a fucking mutt. De Niro. Called, I, I wonder where is Bob now. Bob must just be going fucking bad. He was this, this fuck. Oh, where's Danny Aiello? I can't fucking believe this fucking shit. This pumpkin face cocksucker. I met this motherfucker one time. I said I'm a fucking banger from the Bronx. Don't you talk that fucking shit to me. You orange face cocksucker. <coughs> you pussy grabbing motherfucker. I'll bust your fucking hole in you cocksucker. People are going nuts right now in New York City. Oh, man. All right. So this is what we're going to do, G. Go. No. Because I feel like we brought the energy down. I feel like an idiot, honestly. I feel like a fucking, I'm be, be honest, I feel dumb. I feel betrayed. I'm embarrassed. Um, I'm embarrassed. I'm, in, I'm, I, I'm embarrassed. And it is so hard to embarrass me. I'm embarrassed. Personally. Ooh. You're like, what do you mean? I'm embarrassed. I, I just, that's how I feel. I feel embarrassed. I feel fucking embarrassed. Um, Trump's song, when he wins, should be a uh, Tupac against all odds. He should be rocking that shit. <laughs> well, Moody, well, e yeah. even though I resent the fact that you were right because I wanted you to be so wrong, because you're my man, 50 grand, I'm glad you're right because it, it, it just goes to show, this 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 sums it up as, as the, the 2016 podcast co-host of the year. We're giving you that award. I guarantee you that award is won. It's right. done. You, you, you're you going to get that. I, I could pretty much, just like you predicted that Trump would win, I'm predicting that you're definitely too, you, there's, how can anybody, you might be on some Pulitzer Prize shit. Yeah. Like you, fuck, fuck, fuck the 2016 podcast codes of the year. That just might be the tip of the iceberg for what, the, the type of shit you might, you might be, you might have, I might be your co-host in a few yeah. weeks. You might be like, yo, rap. Yo, man, fuck that shit. I, I, I. Like, like, Yo, like I'm getting offers from Fox News and all that shit. I'm, I'm, I'm out, yeah. dude. Yeah. Like, if you want to come on and talk your little bullshit, Fox, me and my man Wolf Blitzer and Bill O'Reilly and them, I have you on every now and then. But I'm, I'm taking my shit, I'm taking my talents uh, to Yo, Fox dude. News. Yeah. All right, Moody. Well, uh, what? What's up? You got anything no, else I'm for good. me? I, I really don't know where to go from here. Yo, man. I told everybody to get prepared for this, man. Uh, I, I had forewarned, motherfucker. Like, you cannot say you were not warned. <laughs> it's true. It's fucking true. You cannot say that. You I told the Mexicans, I said, get, they, get your green cards together. And I told the black people, 
Find your freedom paper. All right. It's the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. I want to thank my man Eli Lake. G Moody, I'll take it from here, my man. Uh, I'll All talk right. to you soon. And uh, 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 like, yo, when you when the offers start pouring in for you, uh, don't forget about the little people. Oh, no doubt, bro. All right, peace. Peace.